Hello, I'm Nikki, and for those of you who don't know, I'm going to be starting a little over a year long um, adventure across the world soon, as of um, I guess just a couple days from now. Um, so, briefly, I want to go over one, why I've decided to do all of this traveling. Uh, secondly, where I'm going to be going, and then third, what I'm bringing with me. So, first, why am I going to be, you know, going on this trip? Um, well, I always love to travel. It's one of the things, you know, I always try to do at least once a year, doing a big trip or something like that, but um, being part of the corporate world, you only get so many days of vacation, and you know, at the most you can get one or two weeks in a place, and I just feel like that's not really enough to get to know a culture or a country. So I really always wanted to do something really long and extended to get a deeper understanding of different parts of the world. Um, so by going abroad for over a year and seeing a couple different places that way, um, I think that'll really help in that goal. Um, plus I just feel like this was a time in my life when uh, I can be mobile, um, so I you know, sold most of my possessions, left the house that I was renting, quit my job, um, and I'm excited to kind of just have a clean slate for that. Um, so where I'm going is, so I'm going to be teaching English abroad. And there's kind of a couple steps into getting to that point. So first I need to get my TEFL certification. That's a TEFL, Teaching English as a Foreign Language certification. It's pretty common for people who want to teach abroad. Um, and maybe didn't get a degree in education or in English. Um, so to do that, I am going to be going to Quito, Ecuador for a month. Um, like I said, I'm leaving for that in a couple days. And there I'm going to be uh, kind of learning English immersion. So it won't be teaching English in Spanish. Um, it's just going to be teaching English in English. So the nice part about that is getting the certification. I can really apply that to anywhere in the world when I'm actually looking for jobs. So that's nice. <laughs> um, after that, so my month in Quito, I'm going to kind of do some solo traveling around South America. Uh, so I'm going to be going for a week to the Galapagos Islands, which are also part of Ecuador. And then from there, traveling further south into South America and going to Valparaiso, Chile, um, for 12 days, and then to Mendoza, Argentina, uh, for eight days. <laughs> um, and Valparaiso, I've kind of always wanted to go to, um, it's kind of described as the Berlin of, uh, Chile, so it's a city that has a lot of art and music and culture, um, a little bit rugged around the edges, and I figured that'll be a nice contrast to the Galapagos Islands, which are very nature-oriented and laid back, where I'll probably be doing a lot of hiking and seeing wildlife. Um, so it'll be kind of two different experiences there. And then I'm going to go to Mendoza, Argentina, which the nice thing there um, is during my time there, it'll be during this Grape Harvest Festival, um, which is supposed to be the biggest celebration um, of the year for Mendoza. So there'll be uh, a lot of people coming in to see, you know, parades and festivities and music and performances. So this whole, whole city is supposed to really come alive. Um, also, Mendoza is centered in um, a very beautiful part of Argentina where there's a lot of great hiking and wineries. So it's a big wine country, specifically known for Malbec wines. So I'm looking forward to trying a lot of different, of you know, doing wine tasting at the wineries and doing some hiking in Mendoza along with all the festivities that will be happening in town for this wine festival. Uh, from there, I'm going to take a bit of a pause, come back to the States, um, unpack, repack, and the uh, long haul, the year-long trip that I'm actually building up to is going to be in Fukuoka, Japan. Just actually very recently, I was able to secure a job at a private um, language center in Fukuoka where I'll be teaching um, English to children uh, while there. And I'll get more into um, that 
you know, in the upcoming months, because I'll be leaving for that in uh, end, the end of March. So, what I'm going to be uh, bringing with me to Quito and uh, my South American travels are just these two pieces of luggage. Um, this one is a book bag that I can just wear on my back, so it's a little bit heavier than I was hoping, but um, this one just carries all of my non-clothes items, so it'll be my toiletries, my laptop, um, my purse, my actual day purse is in here, uh, kind of my snacks for the flights, and miscellaneous documents, passports, my flashlight, uh, pens and paper, kind of all of those random things that aren't clothes. And I've actually left quite a bit of space in here, so there is a lot of space. And I did that purposefully because I know inevitably I'm going to end up buying some souvenirs, so I want to make sure I have enough room to take a couple things back with me. Um, plus, if I'm carrying it on my back, I don't want it to be too heavy. <laughs> uh, over here I have my pile already picked out of clothes that I'm going to be wearing on the airplane. They're some of my more poofy, bulkier items so that I didn't have to worry about packing them. Plus it's cold in Ohio right now, so uh, I'm taking a bit of layers and a scarf that I'll be wearing on the plane and already set that aside because I know are clothes that I'll want to keep with me throughout my travels. And then this is my main luggage. And this is actually just a carry-on suitcase. So the nice thing is, is I'm not checking any bags this entire time. Uh, I can roll this on with me and carry that as my personal item on my back. And um, that really is nice because when I'm traveling around, if I'm taking budget airlines, a lot of times a checked bag costs extra. So I'm saving money there. At the same time, it's less risk of it getting lost on a flight because if I lost this bag, I would be... Uh, having a really difficult time <laughs> with all the clothes that I'd need to make it through my trip. Um, so those two reasons, plus when you're moving around to get to hostels, um, it's easier to have a small amount of things and in the hostels for security reasons. So uh, in Quito I have a host family, but throughout the rest of my travels in the other cities I'll be staying in hostels and um, you're usually provided with just a large locker that you put a lock on. I want to make sure that all of my luggage can fit in that locker for security purposes um, so that nothing gets stolen. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I have packed all my clothes in here. And this, it was actually a bit difficult in deciding what I wanted to bring because Quito, while you think, you know, it's on the equator, that's got to be really warm. Uh, it's higher altitude than you'd expect. So the days are going to be in the mid to upper 60s, but at nighttime they get, get rather cold into the 40s. So I needed to make sure that I had a couple warmer clothes, long pants, as well as in my classes if I'm doing student teaching or um, shadowing, I need to have some nicer outfits as well. And then when I go further south into the Galapagos or Valparaiso and Mendoza, uh, those are lower elevation and are a lot hotter. So we're talking during the day, it can get up to the 90s. Um, so I need to make also sure that I had a lot of shorts and warm weather clothes also. But luckily, I was able to fit everything in. I did do, I had to do one packing and then pulled out a lot of things that I realized I couldn't fit. So this was the narrowed down version. Um, it's pretty tightly packed in here, but I fit everything I wanted, did the rolling technique, um, so I'm good to go with all of that. Um, and I'm really excited to uh, start this journey soon. Um, this blog post, this is the first of my posts, and uh, I'm kind of still figuring out what exactly I want these to be, so I'm enabling comments on this video, so feel free to add comments if there's certain topics that you'd want me to talk about. I'm planning on um, doing videos a couple times a month to cover, you know, anything from the attractions that I'm seeing in these different places to, um, you know, what type of food I'm eating or what type of music I'm listening to or uh, different history stories that I'm uh, experiencing along my journeys. So. You know, like I said, if you have any topics that you're thinking you'd want me to talk through, feel free to include them, and I'll probably be doing um, an array of things in my posts. Um, and I know that a lot of people have asked, you know, oh, keep, keep us updated on all your travels. So this is my way of doing that. And um, 
I think the next time that I talk to you then, I will be situated in Quito, Ecuador. So until then, bye.